I'm Hugh Collingborn, Director of Technology with Sapphire Steel Software, and this is a series of tutorials on object-oriented programming using ActionScript 3. As before, I'm using the Amethyst IDE for the Adobe Flash platform. The source code for all the tutorials is available for download from the Sapphire Steel Software website. This is the second of two tutorials based on the project 05-oop-3. I'll once again be programming a simple exploring style adventure game to illustrate some features of object orientation. In the last tutorial, I explained how to create room objects that led to other room objects in each of the four compass directions. These directions are accessed using dot notation. For example, the object named here is a room representing the player's current location and here.n returns the room adjoining its northern exit. In this case, n may look like a public variable of the room class, but it isn't. Now let's look at the room class. Here are the variables representing the rooms at each of the four exits. Now notice that I've made them private. This means they're hidden from code outside the class definition itself. Data hiding is one of the principles of good object-oriented design. By hiding variables inside a class, I can be sure that other programmers are not going to be able to get at the internal structure of my class unless they do so using functions or methods that I specifically write for the job. Those functions might, in principle, do all kinds of tests to check that any data passed to them is correct. Or they might do some kind of processing, say by trimming strings or rounding up numbers. In my code here, the methods don't do that. They are just about as simple as methods can be. But even so, making variables private and providing public accessor methods is a good habit to get into. Now, normally, a method in ActionScript is declared using a keyword such as public or private, followed by the function keyword, and then the name of the method. And after that, you can have the arguments that the method takes. And that's how I've declared my init method. Now, to call a function like this from an object, you use this syntax. First, the variable name, then a dot, then the method name, then any arguments of the appropriate type. Here, that's a string and four room objects between round brackets, ending with a semicolon. But to assign and retrieve the values of private variables, you have another option. You can create pairs of getter and setter properties. And you can then call these to assign and retrieve values using dot syntax like this. Now, these properties are just functions which include the word get or set between the function keyword and the function name. A getter property returns a value and a setter assigns a value. You can pick whatever names you like for variables and properties, but a common convention, and one which I use, is to use the same name for the variables and their properties, apart from the fact that the variable name is preceded by an underscore. OK, finally, let's run the game and try it out by clicking a few buttons to move from room to room. When there is no exit in a certain direction, the game informs me of that. But when there is an adjoining room, I move into it. One of the interesting features of object orientation is that classes that define your objects may inherit from one or more ancestor classes. And that's something I'll be looking at in the next tutorial. Now, remember that the source code of all these examples can be downloaded from the Sapphire Steel software website at www dot sapphiresteel dot com